welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about what the discriminant does to our solving of quadratic equations. Because this question is not asking you to solve the quadratic equation, it's just asking you what values of k will make this quadratic equation have equal roots. What does that mean? It means when you solve the quadratic equation, you're going to get answers like x equals 3 or x equals 3. So on both sides, you're going to get the same number as your answer. Well, we don't know what that number is, and we don't care at this point. But what is important is, what would be the values of k for which that situation would occur? Um, well, we have to look into the quadratic formula and see what it does. Because it's inside the quadratic formula that you will understand when you get the same answer on both sides. Okay, let's start with the quadratic formula. So now I have the quadratic formula written on the board. And we want to see where there might be a difference. So whenever you try to find x, well, you're going to have minus e plus or minus. So the only reason we get two answers when we use the quadratic formula is because there's always a plus or a minus. Okay, so that's, that's the only thing. Now, in what way can you do plus or minus and still retain the same answer? Firstly, let's break this into two. So you have x will be minus b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That's the first option. And the second option will be minus b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So it's either you get the positive here or you get the negative here. Everything else is the same. So the major question you want to ask yourself is, under what condition will the answer you obtain here be exactly the same as the answer you obtain here? Well, that will only happen if what you add to this is the same as, I mean, the answer you get when you add something to negative b is the same answer you get when you subtract something from negative b. Well, that never happens unless that something is zero. You know, zero is the identity element for the operation addition. So when you add or subtract, Anything to zero doesn't change that thing. Okay, that's why we call it the identity element. So the only way you're going to get the same answer here or here is if what comes out of this square root operation is zero. And the only way this is going to give you zero, because minus b minus zero is the same thing as minus b plus zero, you're still going to be left with minus b. Okay, so the only time you're going to have a zero from this and a zero from this, well, same thing, is if b squared is equal to 4ac, so that when you subtract 4ac from b squared, you're going to get zero. Because when you get zero, well, your answer here is going to be exactly your answer here. So, the long and short of this is that the only time that you're going to have equal roots for any quadratic equation is when you get zero here. And when you get zero here, it means b squared is exactly equal to 4ac, so that when you subtract, you're going to get zero. So what are we looking for in this question? Well, we're looking for the values of k that will make b squared equal to 4ac. If we have this situation, okay, whatever value of k gives us the situation is the answer. So some people say b squared equals 4ac, or b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. That's another way to say it. b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. This way too is a good way. Okay, so now our focus is just to look for the values of k that will make b squared equal to 4ac, or b squared minus 4ac equal to 0. So let's do that on this side. Firstly, we have to rewrite this quadratic equation like a standard quadratic equation. As you can see, there are two letters in the question. One is x, the other is k. Well, we know that k is a constant because that's what we're supposed to find that will make the roots. The roots are supposed to be in terms of x. Okay. But k is a constant, and we just want to know what values of k will, will it be. So let's rewrite this like a standard quadratic equation. So we're going to have x squared. If we move this over to this side, we're going to have minus 2x into 5k plus 1. Okay, and this over will become plus 8 into 3k plus 5. Okay, so now equals 0. Oh, so equals 0. So we moved everything to the left-hand side. So we have to rewrite this like a standard quadratic equation. Remember that the standard quadratic equation has the form, let me put it here, as x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So x squared plus the something multiplying x. The something multiplying x, we have to rearrange this. So we write it this way x squared minus 2 into 5k plus 1, and we write x. So now you can see that this is representing our b. Well, it's negative, but that's our b. And then we go plus, this is our c. We just leave it like that, 8 into 3k plus 5 equals 0. Now, all we have to do is identify a, identify b, identify c. So let's do that. So at this point, I'm going to say a equals 1. That's the leading coefficient 
a b will be equal to negative 2 into 5k plus 1, and our c is going to be 8 into 3k plus 5. Okay, now the only um, condition where we'll have equal roots is if b squared is equal to 4ac, or if b squared minus 4ac equals 0. So let's see how we can square this. We're going to square this now. So b squared will be negative 2 into 5k plus 1. We're going to square this minus 4 times a. a is 1 times c, and c is this whole expression, which is 8 into 3k plus 5 will be equal to 0. You see, we've borrowed this idea. b squared minus 4ac equals 0. Now we need to distribute this. When you expand this, okay, you'll observe that the negative sign will disappear because when you square a negative, it becomes positive, and everything here is positive. If you redistribute, if you distribute this, well, this is going to give you 100k squared. Okay, that's what you're going to get. You're going to have plus 40k, okay, and then you're going to have plus 4. Yeah, you just do it. I've squared this. This is going to give me 4. When I square this, it's going to be 25k squared plus um, 25k squared plus 10k uh, plus one, and then you multiply it by four, you're gonna have all of this out, but you can leave that out, okay? Just do that yourself. Minus, if you multiply four, well, if you distribute, well, this is gonna give you 32, 32 times three is gonna be 96. So you have 96K plus 32 times five is 160. Okay, but this sign is gonna distribute here, so this is gonna change into a negative equals zero. Okay, let's collect like terms and see what can go. Well, we have 100K squared, uh, 40k minus 96k will be minus 56k, and plus 4 minus 160 is minus 156, and that's equal to 0. These numbers are big, okay? We're going to solve it as a quadratic equation, but I would think that factoring should work. I'm not sure. But before you even factor, look at it. Is there a common factor, a number that will divide each of these terms? Yes, 4, I think. So if you divide each term by 4, you'll end up with 25k squared. If you divide this by 4, you're going to get 14k. If you divide this by 4, you're going to get um, 4 in 15 is 3, in 36 is 9, and then divide this by 4, you still get 0. So now we have a pretty um, quadratic equation to solve, and I would recommend that you always try um, factoring whenever you have a quadratic equation. So right now, I'm going to say, I need to create a puzzle. The puzzle will be such that I'll be multiplying the leading coefficient with a constant term. So that's going to be 25 times negative 39. So I'm going to have 25 times 39 up here. It's going to be negative, okay? Because I know this is negative. And under here, I'm going to have the middle term, which is negative 14. I'm going to ask myself, what two numbers will I multiply together to get this answer? Okay, I don't know what that answer is, and I usually don't care, because all I do is I break down the numbers and I can find how to um, change the factors, but just watch what's going to happen. Um, as you can see, the difference between 25 and 39 is actually 14. So these are the factors you need, but it has to be negative. And for the two numbers you're going to use to replace this negative 14 to be negative, the bigger number has to be the negative number. So we're going to have a positive 25 and a negative 39. So this question has actually solved itself because I'm going to replace negative 14 with 25 and negative 39. Okay, so we're going to say 25k squared minus 25k minus, so this is going to be positive now, and the other is going to, so this is positive, the other is negative, so negative 39k minus 39 equals 0. So you observe that I've replaced only just this negative 14k with these two numbers, plus 25k minus 39k. Now you could have switched these, it doesn't matter, you still get the same answer. Okay, now let's factor by grouping. So we have 25k, you have k plus 1, and this is minus 39, you have k plus 1 equals zero. So you see that what's here is the same thing as here. You factored out the negative. That's why this became a positive. Okay, so now we have around k plus 1. Um, let's just write it out. k plus 1 into 25k minus 39 equals zero. So now for you to get a zero, this must be either, either this is zero or this is zero or both are zeros. Okay, so you have k plus 1 equals zero or 25k minus 39 equals zero. So we come here and say k equals 1 or 39 over 25. And those are the two. No, not 1. K equals negative 1. What are you doing? Come on. So K is going to be negative, negative 1. Okay, so those are the two possible answers that we're going to get. Now, are we correct? Let's go back to the original question. 
Um, I'm going to use this first line. Let's try and plug in. We can't test both. These, this number is awkward, so I'm just going to let it be. You can test it by yourself, but I just want to test this negative 1. If I put negative 1 here, this is going to be 5 times negative 1. That's negative 5. Negative 5 plus 1 will be negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 will be positive 8. So this quadratic is actually, if I rewrite this question, it's going to be x squared plus 8x if I substitute negative 1 here. Now let's go here. Put negative 1 here. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. Okay, 2 times 8 is 16. Mm. So that's what the original quadratic equation, this one would have been, if we knew the value of k to be negative 1. Now, will this give you equal roots? Yes, because when you factor this, you're going to get x plus 4, x plus 4. You see? The both answers would be negative 4 each. So you're going to get x equals negative 4 or negative 4. And this is what the question would have been if we knew that k was negative 1. Well, we just found out it's negative 1. But nobody wants you to do this. We just did this to check, to confirm. Well, we can confirm this, but it's going to be some crazy fractions showing up with big numbers. We don't want to do that. But I hope you understand this concept that the only time a quadratic will have equal roots is when b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, or you can say when b squared is exactly equal to 4ac. Never stop learning. I'll see you in the next video. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.